Now, from West Tennessee's News Channel, this is 7 Eyewitness News at 10. Officials say they've seen an increase in drug-related crimes across parts of West Tennessee in the past month. They say, however, they've seen a common theme among the criminals involved. Good evening, I'm Brad Douglas. 7 Eyewitness News reporter Madupe Idowu is just back from Henry County to tell us what that trend is. Madupe. Well, Brad, it's all about the family. The Henry County Sheriff's Department made 10 arrests this week for drug-related charges alone, and they say they're seeing a trend for criminals with drug-related charges. The offenses have become a family affair. Uh, so most of these are associated with marijuana, some of the meth. Uh, the Henry County Sheriff's Department executed warrants in six separate searches and have made 10 drug-related arrests in just this past week. So, uh, you know, we have had an increase uh, in drug activity uh, within Henry County. In these past five days, deputies were able to confiscate all these items and thousands of dollars. At the arrest site, uh, we have had two meth labs, we've quarantined two houses, uh, we have also removed uh, three children uh, from residences. In early January, officials arrested Rhonda and Joseph Gertz for their alleged production of meth, forcing the Department of Children's Services to remove three children living in the home. And in mid-December, officials arrested this mother-daughter-son trio who are accused of theft and drug-related crimes. Officials say if families aren't dealing together, criminals tell them they sell drugs to provide for their families. A lot of the people, the drug dealers that we're arresting, are saying that it's due to economic times. They can't find a job. They're actually selling drugs to make ends meet. Deputies say tough times drive drug-related crimes, especially for first-time offenders. Uh, I know times are tough, but when times get tough, you know, you have to get out there and find a job or use some of the communities or the state's resources to, you know, help get you through these tough times. The Henry County Sheriff's Department says the department will continue an aggressive approach to getting harmful drugs off the street. Madupe Edo 7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Madupe. Well, after defying Tennessee state law for seven years, a registered sex offender has been arrested in Louisiana. The Madison County Sheriff's Department says 51-year-old Michael Dwayne Godwin was arrested today in Louisiana and charged with violating the state sex offender registry law. Record shows since his release from prison in 2007, Godwin never registered with the department. He will now be extradited back to Tennessee. Union City Police say they've caught the three people behind a Sunday night pistol whipping and robbery. These three, Carl Patton Jr., David Polk, and Lisa Luter, each face charges of aggravated robbery and theft. Officers say the trio drove up beside a man as he walked near Gibson and Morgan Streets around 11 Sunday night. Investigators say the three got out of their truck, beat the man in the head with a silver handgun, then took his wallet and cell phone. The victim is now recovering at home. In a follow-up tonight, a trooper injured in Gibson County today is recovering tonight in a Memphis hospital. Officials say the injured officer, Trooper Chris Moeller, was airlifted to the med in Memphis with a broken leg. Now here is a look at the scene along Highway 45 near Trenton. Troopers say around 3.30 this afternoon, Moeller was heading north on Highway 45 when the driver of a red Oldsmobile pulled out from Highway 54, causing the collision. That driver is being treated here in Jackson. The extent of their injuries is not known. A day after pleading guilty to state charges for stealing from a crime victim, former Jackson police officer Marvin Brooks pleads guilty to federal charges in the same case. Today, the 36-year-old pleaded guilty to federal counts of violating the victim's civil rights and for having an unregistered short barrel shotgun, which is illegal. Now, yesterday, Brooks pleaded guilty to stealing more than $1,200 from shooting and robbery victim Malcolm Wortham, seen here in August of 2010 as a result of he, that he was immediately fired from the department. As soon as we are knowledgeable of anything that would have any inclination of tarnishment to the badge of pride that's worn by a law enforcement officer, that we will, have, upon learning, that we will take the immediate steps uh, to remedy this situation. The U.S. Attorney's Office tells us Brooks faces up to 30 years in prison and up to a million dollar fine. He'll be sentenced April 23rd. Similar charges in both state and federal court are still pending against his fellow officer, David Drevlow. Henderson County deputies need your help finding two men who stole a variety of items from a convenience store in Parker's Crossroads. Now here he is walking at the bottom of your screen. You can see here that he takes hats from the rack. Later, surveillance cameras show him stuffing the hats into his coat. 
He's also accused of taking other items and hiding them in his jacket. If you recognize him or you know the man who was with him, contact the Henderson County Sheriff's Department. By the way, officers believe this isn't the first time these thieves have targeted this BP convenience store. Also in Henderson County, a son is facing charges for stealing a purse and hundreds of dollars from his mother. Investigators say 21-year-old Matthew McIntyre, a finger, is charged with theft over $500. The man's mother told investigators that her son Matthew and another relative were at her home in Lexington last Friday for a visit. Now, after the two left, she noticed her purse containing over $500, driver's license and insurance cards were missing. The victim says she was distracted when the purse was apparently taken from behind her recliner. According to a statement from Matthew McIntyre's wife, her husband did take a purse belonging to his mother. Allegedly, Matthew had stolen from his mom previously, repeated times. She never reported it, and finally she, enough is enough. McIntyre is currently on probation, and investigators plan to issue an additional warrant for violation of community correction. Another cold night across West Tennessee, but there's a warming trend coming our way. and We're all anxiously awaiting that to occur. As we look outside tonight, we see absolutely no problems weather-wise, except if you go outside, it is very cold. Here's what your numbers look like for today. We actually saw a high of 39, 22, the low 48 and 28 of the normal 76 degrees in 1960, with a record low of 6 degrees in 2011. No precipitation today at the airport or here at ABC 7. Almost a full inch of rainfall so far for the year, or precip, I should say. Measurable precip so far for the year. Fast Track 7 is going to show no precipitation currently over the viewing area, so things are dry at the moment. Looks like they're going to be dry at least through the weekend. Will they be warmer? Possibly so. Cold again tonight, warmer on Saturday, and then rain coming back in the forecast by Monday. I'll take a look at the forecast with you in just a few minutes. Brad, back to you. All right, Gary, thank you. Well, some Obion County leaders want to take law enforcement powers away from their constables, but they say right now they're a liability to the county's taxpayers, but some constables don't agree. Obion County commissioners say their constables are required to complete 40 hours of in-service education every year, but they haven't been doing so. County Commissioner Jerry Grady says they wouldn't push to limit the power of constables if they would abide by the in-service guidelines because not doing so puts the county and taxpayers at risk. Constables say they shouldn't have to attend the class each year. Well, I don't really see any reason for them to do it. We run for our office as far as a constable, just like the county mayor, just like all the city, all the county commissioners, all of those run for their office. County Mayor Benny McGuire says he's confident that the law enforcement power will be taken away from constables, making them civil process servers only. Jailers in Tennessee will no longer have to ask inmates immigration related questions while booking them into their county jails. Today, the state post commission unanimously rescinded the policy at the urging of the state attorney. A lawsuit has been filed claiming the commission created the rules via email and in meetings that were not announced to the public, which is against state law. Opponents of the policy also argue the policy promotes racial profiling. At that time, uh, instructed all jailers across the state to ask two questions to a person if you felt like they were an illegal immigrant, to ask what is your place of birth and are you a citizen of the United States? Sheriff Wolfork is a member of the Post Commission and attended today's meeting. Now, the lawyer behind the suit against the commission says he plans to drop it based on today's decision. However, inmates will still have their immigration status checked, according to the state attorney, as part of a federal program that is now active in all 95 counties. Well, don't put your live Christmas tree in the landfill instead. Will we have time to take it to an event tomorrow that can dispose of the tree in an environmentally friendly way? Keep Jackson Beautiful is again sponsoring the chipping of the green. Members of the group and Master Gardener volunteers will provide the manpower to turn your old trees into small wood chips, which can be used for garden pathways or for composting. The chips will be bagged and available for pickup by the public at no charge. You can bring your live trees to the fairgrounds park to have them ground into mulch. And you can pick up the wood chips tomorrow morning from 9 until noon at Jackson's Fairgrounds Park. Well, the Marines videotape desecrating the bodies of Taliban soldiers have been identified. When we come back, 
find out what trouble lies ahead for them. And still ahead, how students from a Washington, D.C. elementary school are paying tribute to Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr.